Hey guys, I just created a brand new Patreon page that will offer you behind the scenes and exclusive content related to education, information, and advice as I continue to show my mission of showing you guys the Spanish speaking world one video at a time. And so if you're interested in further supporting my channel and learning more, check the link in the description for more information. All right guys, back to the video. Good evening to all my adventurers. Adventure Elliot here. I'm in the city of Gijón, which is in northwest Spain, the biggest city in Asturias. And today, I thought I would give you guys a little tour of this beautiful, quaint city. Like I said, on the northern coast of Spain in Asturias, bordering the Cantabrian Sea in the Bay of Biscay. I'm doing what's called the Camino de Santiago the northern route, Ruta del Norte, and one of the stops, of course, about 500 kilometers in, is this city of Gijón. And so, let's do a walk around of the city, let's check it out. You know, it's a city, a medium-sized city of about 260,000 people, or a little more, the 15th biggest city in Spain. And I'm here in the center part of the city. We're gonna do a little walk around tour and uh, show you what it has to offer. It's one of those places that not a lot of people come to when they visit Spain. They go to the central part, they go to Barcelona, they go to the, the southern coast, Catalonia for example. But not everybody ventures to the north where I am. And so I think in that sense it's unique. So we're starting this video in the Plaza de Instituto. And you can see still in northern Spain the temperature is not so hot like southern Spain here in August. But we have the Sobre Mesa, the, the outdoor eating life, and very pop popular in Spanish culture to do so. Everybody comes to these plazas and get together. The kids come and play, and the families have a good time. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show everything in this video regarding the city, but I'm gonna do my best to show you, you know, what the most attractive things are. And so there's an old town, a Casco Antiguo, and there's this center here, and it's got quite unique architecture, you guys. Quite unique, uh, different than other parts of Spain. So as I walk along in the city, I'll uh, give you some brief history as well, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. So stay tuned, let's watch the whole thing, because it's only gonna get better from here. Now just a tip for you non-Spanish speakers, the Spanish people pronounce the city Gijón, like with an X, Gijón. It sounds a little funny, it's, it's a pronunciation we're not used to, but the locals will call it Gijón in Asturias. And so it's a Thursday night here, it's pretty bustling. Luckily my girlfriend and I, she's right here, Carrie, Carrie. We got lucky and we found a hotel, you guys, for 72 euros. This is not the cheap vacation you're looking for if you come to Spain. Um, 72 euros is the cheapest you're gonna find and we got a decent hotel. But everything is going for 100, 150, 200 and more. Especially here in August, which is the month of vacation for locals. I'm now situated in Paseo de Begonia. There's a park here where kids play. A church over there, a cathedral, yet another one. And we have these palm trees. These are palm trees native to the Canary Islands. Interestingly enough, they thrive here in northern Spain in a temperate, a maritime climate. It doesn't get too hot and it doesn't get too cold. And so again, they thrive here and you'll see them all throughout northern Spain, Cantabria, País Vasco, Asturias. And you'll often see them in these estates, these vias, which are houses of wealthy people who return from the colonies, the Americas, Cuba, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, back to Spain in the 19th century, or before then as well. And they thrived and they brought these palm trees from the Canary Islands with them, among other things. And so a lot of these cities in Northern Spain have that American influence that you see or have seen in my videos previously. And so we're gonna head back towards the coast because there's two really important beaches, urban beaches for that matter, here in Gijón that uh, people flock to in the summer on a sunny day. And if you saw me entering the city earlier in the previous video, you just saw 
how full it was. But like I said, the Sobre Mesa, the classic Spanish lifestyle in full effect here. And some sort of theater, I think. I could be wrong, but impressive structure nonetheless. We have some typical pastries from Asturias, Covadonga and Carballon. And of course, we're on Calle Covadonga. And Covadonga is a buzzword here in Gijón. I'll explain why later. It's too windy right now. And of course, a nice little coffee. As I said earlier, the word Covadonga, the buzzword in Asturias, a very important word historically and culturally, and it refers to the Basilica of Covadonga. Do yourself a favor and Google, just Google Covadonga and see what pops up. A lot of things will pop up, mostly incredible pictures and landscape scenery. And so, as I mentioned earlier, the Moorish people occupied the majority of the Iberian Peninsula um, before, of course, Spain became Spain. And there was a key battle in Covadonga, the Battle of Covadonga in the year 722, where the Christians defeated the Moorish people, thus starting the reconquest of Spain, pushing the Moorish people south and south and south all the way to Granada and eventually expelling them permanently. There's still lots of Arabic Moorish remains such as the uh, Alhambra, the Mesquita, etc. in Spain. You'll see them all over the place, especially in Andalusia. The Moorish people did occupy for some years here in Gijón, although it wasn't really that significant. And if it wasn't for the defeat of the Moorish people in Covadonga, perhaps Spain would have been different today. And so it was a very strategic battle. Don Palayo changed the complete trajectory of Spanish history forever. And as a result, Spain went on to have one of the greatest empires the world has ever seen. The Spanish Empire, the conquest of the Americas. And a lot of what you see here, these ideas came from the Spaniards creating new architectural ideas in places like Cuba, Havana, Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, Cartagena, Colombia, Caracas, Venezuela, etc. And it's very interesting, Asturias has a unique history that for me it really calls attention to that. Another place in Spain that is very uh, significant in terms of immigration, a couple places, and port cities that were really important. The Canary Islands, one, strategic location, but also Cadiz, Spain. And I have some videos in Cadiz, Spain, sort of talking about that. Cadiz and to the west there, Palos de la Frontera, were two important port cities from which Christopher Columbus and his crews embarked on the great voyages exploring the Americas, four separate voyages. And that, of course, also changed the history of Spain and the world. Calle Corrida, busy street. We're heading that way. And so Calle Corrida, in that area you'll see, has a lot to do with the way that Gijón evolved once its own history began to change and once it became a very busy port city with iron and coal, for example. The city began to thrive also, trade between the Americas here was permitted and established. I believe in the 18th century, that also helped it thrive. And so we'll head to that part of the city so you can see the connections that I just mentioned. And wow, is this Calle Corrida? Yes, it is. Just look at all the people, you guys. Wow. Calle Corrida, busy street. Mostly pedestrian. Gijón is bigger than I expected. I said it's the 15th biggest city in Spain. 
pero se siente más grande, ¿no? 15 ciudad más grande de España. Ah, sí, sí, sí. However, if you combine, you look at the metropolitan area, Oviedo, Aviles to the west of us, Gijón, it has a very large metropolitan area, over 800,000 people, and in that case, it's more like the eighth biggest metropolitan area in all of Spain. And just look at this architecture here, you guys, like, I don't know, ¿Dónde existe esto en España? O sea, no me acuerdo viendo esto en el sur de España, en Madrid, por ejemplo, no. I don't remember seeing this in Madrid, you guys. Nope. It's very distinct. And so, we've been on what's called the Camino de Santiago, the Way of St. James. We've been hiking for hundreds of kilometers, literally. And so we're exhausted. We're, we're spending a night here in a hotel. And we have been sort of away from urban civilization, so to speak. The last place I was in that was a big city was Santander. So between here and Santander, we've been crossing, traversing Asturias, and it is some of the most beautiful countryside I've ever seen in my life. You can see the videos of, the, of those journeys, you know, each day in succession on my channel here. Just go to the videos and look up uh, the previous videos from the Camino de Santiago. And we've encountered a lot of interesting things a lot of the way, a lot of nice people, a lot of animals, a lot of great landscapes, countryside, just absolutely stunning landscape, you guys. Asturias is a treasure, a cove of treasure. And so here we're gonna enter the old town. And this is where we walked into the city earlier. I was narrated in Spanish from yesterday's video. It's windy here too, you guys. She's cold. Because the rest of Spain here in August is a very hot place. Oppressively hot. Okay, so we're entering the Port Marina area. And it's, I wanna say a brisk. Uh, 65 degrees and windy here, you guys. It's chilly. Early August, the very beginning of August. And here in the distance is the old town, Casco Antiguo. And a little sign that says Gijón. Gijón, for you English speakers that might have trouble pronouncing Gijón. <laughs> Myself included. Um, well, look at all the boats, the sailboats, the yachts. Wow. Ooh, that sun now. Ooh, give me that sun. And so Gijón has had some tumultuous history. It was burned down, I think in the 1300s, completely burned down. So there's not a lot of pre-Roman history or medieval history for that matter. It was completely burned down. It was also destroyed during the Spanish Civil War in the 1900s, the 1930s, 1936, I believe. And so it didn't really start thriving until they established net rail networks between other places like Oviedo to the south, Madrid, allowing them to export their iron, steel, their coal, and then of course establishing trade between the Americas, but lots of interruptions in history have made the place kind of uh, have to restart multiple times. Esas bandes, gaites, via de Gijón. De Chichón. Hombre, asturianos. Están de fiesta ahora en la. en la. en la. está de fiesta Gijón. Sí, sí, es un festival. Pues sí, pues sí. Vale. Sí. Muchas gracias por la, la, el concierto. So, these big pipes, this Gaita culture is definitely one of a kind here in Asturias, especially for Spain. And you just saw them playing. We got lucky because that was unplanned, that was unscripted, and wow, they just came and gave us a show for free. I just, I had to do a live stream, I did a live stream on it, so you can see that if you want. But just look how beautiful the old town looks. 
and the, the sky looks like it's gonna storm. It's sunny. Over there it's raining. This is typical Asturias, you guys. Okay, you guys, so continuing along, and you see how the, the buildings have that moldy look a little bit. It's not ugly, but it just shows that the weather here, there's more moisture in the air, and as a result, buildings have that coloration. And wow, ooh, look at this, look at this street. Interesting. We found the street to get some food. Oh yeah, everybody is out. Look at a lot of places to eat, lots of places to eat, and a happy dog. Hola, hola. Right here, we're gonna eat here, you guys. But just look at this street. Como se llama esta calle? This is Calle Begonia, you guys. This is where you get some food if you're in if you're in uh, Gijon. I think the prices might be a little bit higher, but just look at the environment. It is interesting. The clan, El Clan. Wow. Let's keep checking it out. Interesting evening scene here. It's almost 8 o'clock. This is when people come out to eat, have dinner between 8 and 11. And pre-pandemic, even later than that sometimes. Wow, it's so great to see. The euros are definitely circulating in Gijón, that's for sure. Everything here is more expensive than southern Spain, certainly. Wow. Look at all the people. Ah, look at all the lovely people. This year I think most of these people are Spaniards. They're doing uh, tourism within their own country, not risking going abroad. Just because it's a hassle to go abroad right now. Not because it's too dangerous, but you know, you gotta buy a PCR test here, a PCR test there. So yeah. Okay guys, so it's almost 9.30 p.m. We had some cachopos, wow. I didn't record because there was music. Can't put copyright music on the video, but wow. This area is just, Amazing, Buen Successo it's called, the street. It is just loaded with people. And look at all the people eating, like, this makes me so happy seeing everybody out. Just enjoying their lives. It is like, loaded, like, we have like four or five blocks here. Just restaurant after restaurant after restaurant. And here in August, it is all full. So we're gonna go grab an ice cream and then it's late so we're gonna go to sleep. <laughs> and tomorrow, part two of the video will continue. We'll show you the old town. What I was planning on showing you in this part, but we got distracted so... We'll see that tomorrow in the second half of the video. But I just love these walking and talking tours, telling the history, showing the current scene, freezing our butts off even though it's August. <laughs> August in Spain, freezing. And we're gonna go for ice cream. One of my subscribers told me that Regma has really good ice cream. So, heladeria is ice cream in, well, ice cream shop in Spanish, so. We'll pick this up tomorrow morning, guys.